Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. The card I'm going to share with you today actually uses a patchwork pattern and a wonderful technique over the top, and it's really simple. I'm going to share two different project ideas with you today using totally different color palettes. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you click the small bell icon so that you'll receive notifications when I'm live here on YouTube, as well as when I upload a new video. Let's head over the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. You're going to choose two patterns of complementary designer series paper so that the colors coordinate. You can use your paper trimmer, the layering squares dies, or a punch to create your squares. Mine are one and one quarter inch by one and one quarter inch. Because the designer series paper is thin, you're going to be able to stack up several sheets of it and then use a die to die cut through numerous layers at a time to help speed up the process. I've cut about six of each here. I probably have more than I'm going to need, but I wanted to make sure that I was well prepared as I'm working on my design. I'm going to be using my grid paper underneath me. The grids on this paper are absolutely perfect for this technique to make sure everything is nice and straight. I want to make sure that the cardstock I'm going to be using as the base is not going to shift on my grid paper. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of adhesive to the back side. Now I know that this is very strong and tacky. So what I like to do is I like to take it on my sleeve or even on my jeans and rub it on there to break down some of that stickiness. Then I'm ready to go ahead and adhere it here to the grid paper. I'm careful to align it along the top to the grid lines as well as the side. And then I'll press that in place to secure it. I'm going to be using my silicone craft sheet with my adhesive. That's going to help me get the adhesive easily on those small squares. Liquid glue, adhesive, and hot glue will not stick to this, which makes it perfect for my craft room. It's going to allow me to keep my other work surface sticky free. Decide which pattern you want to start with, and then we're going to flip that over here, and we're going to add adhesive to the wrong side. I'm going to work up here in the top left corner. I'm looking to align the top of my designer series paper and the edge to my cardstock. And then when I'm happy with it, I'll tack it in place. I'm going to switch over now to a different pattern. And I'm going to flip that over. And again, we're going to put adhesive on the back side. This time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to align it here on the tip of my square. Because I know that this is straight, if I align it here and I look visually, it's going to be close enough. We're going to add adhesive now to the back side of another piece of complementary paper, which matches this one. And we are going to fill in this space here at the top, again, aligning the tip and then aligning it here on the grid paper. Now that we have those secured, it's a matter of just alternating the pattern. So I'm going to go back to that first row and I'm going to add the other piece here. I've placed adhesive on the back side and I'm going to line up this corner once again, and then we'll tack that in place. We're going to do the exact same thing filling in this area here. Now, depending on where you started and where you're stopping, you may need to fill in those areas. I have another coordinating piece to this one that I've added adhesive to the back. And what I'm going to do now is patchwork this or fill it in, aligning my tips, looking on my grid paper to make sure it's straight as possible, and then we'll tack that in place. Now it's just a matter of filling in. I've added adhesive on this next pattern, which is going to equal this row, and that's going to get adhered here. Once again, aligning those tips, keeping your pattern nice and straight. I'm going to skip down now to here. I've added adhesive to the back side of this piece, and then once again, we're going to align the tips and secure that in place. I've got one additional square here that's going to fill this in. Again, looking for alignment, and we'll tack that in place. Now you can see here, we're going to have to do a little bit more filling in. And then I'll line these tips and tack that in place. I'm going to press on top of here to make sure the areas on the cardstock are well secured. With my Take Your Pick tool with the paper piercing tool attachment, I'm very carefully going to come up underneath here to help me lift it. And I'm just going to kind of wiggle this off. I don't want to displace any of those squares. Now on the back side, you will recall that we have that tiny piece of adhesive. And we don't really want that to impede on what our next few steps are. So this is just a great tip for you if you've got sticky areas that you want to get rid of. I love to use my embossing buddy for this. There's an anti-static powder in here, which is actually designed to use when you're heat embossing. You rub it over your cardstock before you place your ink and your powder, and it helps to repel the powder from areas you don't want it to stick. But because the powder is there, it's going to work great to break down that area. Now we're going to work from the back side to trim away what we don't need. I keep a pair of scissors here in the studio that are designated strictly for sticky things because I know there's adhesive on these other areas. 
So using the back side of the cardstock as a guide, you're going to come up around the edges and you are going to trim away the excess that you don't need. Now, if your work surface is slightly gritty from the embossing buddy, I've got another tip for you. I cut a Swiffer sheet in half so it's a little bit smaller, and I love to swipe this over my work surface because I don't want any of that powder to transfer to my ink pads or projects. Our next step now is to go ahead and add some embossing to this to give it that beautiful patterned patchwork and quilted look. I chose the tin tile embossing folder. I'm going to go ahead and open up the folder and I'm going to place that cardstock right inside. And then I'll pass this through my embossing machine. You'll notice that the embossing has actually embedded into the designer series paper as well as the cardstock, which actually makes it look patterned like a quilt, all one piece. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and add adhesive to the back side, working very close to the outside perimeter making sure that I've got good coverage. Because it's been embossed, you want to make sure that you're not going to have any lifting. I have a piece of crushed curry cardstock here, which coordinates with that designer series paper. I did score it in half right before you joined me, and I'll be using my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. I'm going to take that patchwork pattern, and I'm going to adhere it here to the center of the card base. Once I have it intact, I like to flip it over and rub from the back side because I don't want to deboss the front of the image. Let's go ahead and add our greeting. I've got a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock here, and I chose basic gray ink for this. I didn't want to use black because I didn't want it to be too harsh on that crushed curry finish. And I've chosen the words, Sending Healing Hugs. This comes from the stamp set called So Sentimental. Absolutely am enjoying this because of the mixed font and various greetings. You'll be able to find this stamp set in the Stampin' Up! mini catalog. If you don't already have a demonstrator and you're interested in receiving complimentary copies of the current catalogs, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Contact Me, and I'll be sure to include the current sale brochure. I'll ink up that greeting in the basic gray, and then we'll stamp that here. I'm going to punch out my greeting using the story label punch. I'm going to use it upside down so I can navigate where I'm going and get it as centered as possible. And then we'll punch that out. I'm going to be creating a layer to this greeting. And this is from the label me lovely punch from the MIDI catalog. I'm going to be using the coordinating scrap of crushed curry cardstock and punch that out. I want to create some continuity to my card. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to emboss this layer as well. Let's go ahead and assemble this. I'm gonna place this right on top of that background. I'm not gonna use any dimensionals on this layer specifically. So I have my silicone craft sheet once again, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're working very generously on the adhesive again because of the deep embossing. And I've chosen to place that here near the bottom right. Again, I'll rub from the back, make sure I don't deboss the image. Our greeting, I'm gonna flip over. I'm gonna use a few dimensionals for the back side. I'm going to use that paper piercing tool attachment, and I'm going to pick off those paper backings. This greeting now is going to go across the center of the embossed punched layer. And to finish it off, I wanted to add just a little bit of coordination using the Holiday Rhinestone Basics. And you're going to see that these coordinate beautifully. There are already glue dots on the back of these, so I'm going to add one here and another here. As I promised, I have another card to share with you using this exact same technique. Isn't this beautiful? This uses the Perennial Essence Designer Series paper. I layered it on Pretty Peacock with a layer here that's embossed as well. And this is the Country Floral Embossing Folder. This greeting comes from the Strong and Beautiful stamp set. Lots of fun, beautiful, encouraging messages in here as well. I would love to know which of these two cards is your favorite. Would you leave me a comment below? If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like. It certainly helps. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day. 